Starfleet comm badges were first introduced in the next generation as a more efficient and easily carried replacement for the communicators used before and during the original series films. Since then, however, they've become a staple of Star Trek. These devices have gone through a number of slight design changes over the years, but always feature the same iconic Starfleet insignia that was originally seen in TOS. Comm badges are primarily known as communication devices, which is, of course, where the prefix comm comes from, but they also have a variety of other uses that come up less often. In this list, we're going to take a look at a few of these abilities, as well as some general trivia about comm badges that few people actually notice. We're going to start off with details that are a bit more well known and gradually get more obscure as we go on. With all that being said, I'm Bree from Trek Culture, and if I sound sick, it's because I am. Slight head cold aside, here are 10 things that you didn't know about comm badges. Number 10, the Universal Translator. One of the most important devices inside the comm badge were the Universal Translators. These devices can scan brainwaves of most sentient aliens to translate their words into the user's native language in real time. The Universal Translators were invented shortly after the launch of the NX-01 Enterprise. They could be handheld or built into many ship systems, but incorporating them into comm badges made them much simpler to use, as the whole process was basically automated and available at any time. With a Universal Translator on them at all times, Starfleet officers were much more prepared in emergencies and while on away missions. Members of other species, such as the Ferengi, also kept Universal Translators on them at all times, but in the form of small devices inserted into their ears, as we saw in the Deep Space Nine episode Little Green Men. But the comm badge design seems much less invasive and easier to replace and repair. Number 9. Comm Badges as Identification Every comm badge has unique markers that could be used as personal identification. In the Next Generation episode Drumhead, we learned that the Enterprise's computers could actually tell who was using a console at any specific time by interfacing with their comm badge ID. Additionally, in the episode The Hunted, it's revealed that comm badges from this era also include a record of their assigned user's fingerprint data, which allows access to be restricted to them alone. This security feature prevents stolen identities and is very similar to fingerprint scanners on modern smartphones. It's also very likely that an officer's comm badge could be used as a more futuristic form of real-life military dog tags that were used to easily identify casualties. As most fans already know, Starfleet transporters can also lock onto specific people using unique markers on their comm badge. And to be honest, there's probably many other forms of ID included in them that we haven't even seen on camera yet. Number 8. Modifications into a Distress Beacon Comm badges transmit using subspace frequencies. This is the same technology that allows for faster-than-light communication between starships. Because of this, if Starfleet officers ever get lost or stranded alone, it's actually possible for them to modify their comm badges into a subspace distress beacon. The range of these beacons is very limited compared to dedicated subspace transmitters, but any ship passing by close enough to a planet would be able to detect a signal from the surface and conduct a rescue operation. This function has probably saved countless lives in Trek, as almost every officer stranded on an alien planet would still have their comm badge on them. We also know that an emergency distress signal would be activated from the badges if their outer casing was ever damaged. This is likely either to let the officer's ship know that they were in danger, or to help crew locate fallen officers. Number 7. Their use as a transporter aid As most fans know, Starfleet transporters are some of those buggy devices in Star Trek. A passing ion storm, a thick atmosphere, and many other things can block the signal and make beaming much more difficult, if not impossible. One of the ways in which Starfleet counteracted this was by locking onto the comm badges rather than the people themselves. Apparently, comm badges give off a much stronger and more easily detectable signal that can cut through distortion. There have been a number of times in Trek when this technique was used. For example, when a bomb was planted on the Enterprise in the Next Generation episode, The High Ground, Geordi attached his comm badge to it to help the transporter room beam it into space. It can be assumed that comm badges must have some sort of easily distinguishable rare materials inside of them, or some form of high-powered energy emitter that makes it easy to detect them even with huge amounts of interference. Number 6. Discovery's new Tricom Badges The crew of the Discovery were introduced to a lot of new technology after traveling to the 32nd century, including Tricom Badges. This is an invention that replaced Starfleet Com Badges at some point before their arrival in the future. In addition to a sleek new design and addition of rank markers, the Tricom Badges also include several built-in devices to help with life in the final frontier. These devices were activated by hand gestures and tapping, and included a personal transporter interface, a tricorder, and a holographic pad to connect to the computer archive. In much the same way that the original 
Qualcomm badges removed the need for handheld communicators, Tricom badges cut down on the preparation needed for away missions, and made life much more convenient in Starfleet by combining multiple devices into one. The Discovery crew took a while to get used to their upgrades, but soon embraced them along with all the other 32nd century technology that they acquired. Number 5. Non-Starfleet Com Badges Com badges have a reputation for being used by Starfleet, but there are actually a ton of other alien societies and private citizens that use similar devices. Most notably, the Klingon Empire and the Bajoran Militia both had com badges in the shape of their own insignias. The Klingons attached theirs to the side of one of their arms, typically, and the Bajorans kept them on the left side of their chests, the side opposite of where Starfleet com badges go. Additionally, Cristobal Rios from Star Trek Picard had his own personal com badge with a custom emblem, which he provided to passengers aboard La Serena. There have also been dozens of other alien badges seen in Star Trek that could be com badges or just simple insignias. It's unclear whether the Federation was the first organization to invent com badges or whether some alien empire had come before them, but by the 24th century, the tech was commonplace pretty much all throughout the galaxy. Number 4. The Origin of the Design The familiar shape of Starfleet's com badges was canonically an evolution of the Starfleet logo that some officers used to wear as patches on their arms around the time of Star Trek Enterprise. Eventually, Starfleet dropped the background, leaving just the yellow pointer at the center, much like how modern real logos seem to simplify over time. The old United Earth logo itself seems to be an evolution of NASA's logo. It has the same circular shape, starry background, and pointer at the center, but slightly simplified was the removal of the white orbital shape and letters. NASA and other modern day space organizations are about as close as we're gonna get to Starfleet right now, so it makes sense that certain design elements from them would make their way into the future. Also, in a great example of reality mirroring fiction, the United States recently revealed the logo for its new Space Force, which includes an arrowhead design much closer to the look of com badges than NASA's logo. This design was probably taken from elements of the shield for the Air Force Space Command that was created in the 1980s, but it's unknown whether or not the original design was inspired by Trek or is merely a coincidence. Number 3. Section 31 Com Badges The Federation secret organization Section 31 often gets access to powerful new technology before Starfleet does. One example of this is com badges. During the first two seasons of Star Trek Discovery, Starfleet officers are still using communicators. However, in the episode Saints of Imperfection, we saw Ash Tyler, now an agent for Section 31, tap his badge with his hand and speak into it to hail Leyland. Pike was just as surprised to see this as we are and asked Tyler what the hell kind of communicator is that. The Section 31 com badges of this era look exactly the same as the Starfleet badges, but with black coloring on one side. Some members of Starfleet recognized the black badges as a symbol of authority, but few knew their true meaning or that they doubled as communicators. So far, it's unknown why it was that Section 31 decided to keep com badges a secret for so long. Number 2. The Altered Future Com Badge One particular com badge design with two gold lines behind a silver outline of the Starfleet insignia appeared in a number of possible futures. We saw it in the Next Generation episode All Good Things, the Deep Space Nine episode The Visitor, and the Voyager episodes Timeless and Endgame. These possible futures never came to be, so neither did the badges. But Star Trek Picard gave us a new com badge design that looked very similar. It too had the outline of the insignia in front of two lines, but this version was slightly different. For example, the top corners seemed to be shaved down and the left line was made larger than the right. It's very likely that these badges appeared slightly different from the ones we saw in Possible Futures because of the changes made to their timeline in the episodes that were mentioned earlier. Number 1. The Earliest Starfleet Com Badge We've Seen As mentioned in the intro, com badges were first seen in The Next Generation. In the original series and the TOS films, the entire Federation, apart from agents of Section 31, used communicators instead, which were small phone-shaped devices. However, there's one scene that gives us a hint that they were introduced long before Picard's time. In the Next Generation episode Yesterday's Enterprise, there's a scene where we see Lieutenant Richard Castillo, a time-traveling visitor from the Enterprise-C, tapping on his com badge and talking into it. Lieutenant Castillo came from 22 years in the past, back when Starfleet still used the stylish red uniforms from the TOS films, which makes one wonder when exactly that change was made from the ordinary badges to the com badges. This scene was probably just included because the team behind the episode simply forgot that the badges from the TOS films were never used as communicators. But the characters from that episode came from a point in time decades after the Enterprise B launched in Star Trek Generations, so com badges being invented within this period fits into the timeline well enough for us to consider it canon. 
canon. And those were 10 things that you hopefully didn't already know about Star Trek com badges. If you liked this and you want to keep up to date with all of our current content, you can give us a like or you could subscribe to our channel so you can always get new releases when they come out. We are so super close to hitting 250,000 subscribers, which we are trying to do by Christmas. So thank you to all the wonderful people who are helping to make that happen. If you'd like to follow me on social media, you can do so by finding me at Trekkie Bree on Twitter. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and don't forget to live long and prosper.